And there it is. Welcome to Hold and Modify. This is Q, and you're watching YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yeah, CD32. Let's get into this. The CD32, the elusive CD32, especially here in America. Now, I will comment that the Amiga dealer I worked at way back in the day called Computer Link in Garden City, Michigan, we did have these. In fact, I walked into the store one day, there was boxes of them sitting on the shelf and I was blown away because I remember reading about it in Amiga World and I knew it was coming, but it was only in, uh, in Europe. And then we, the store I worked at, um, and I always say the store I worked at was, uh, okay, it was more of a clubhouse that I hung out at, but everyone there was super cool. We, we had a lot of European magazines at the store that we sold. Our customers loved that because, you know, obviously the guys, you know, Amiga was a much bigger deal in Europe than it was in America, especially for the gaming side and all this kind of stuff. And we saw the CD32 uh, in all the papers, in the ads, you know, in the ads, you know, in the magazines. And I was like, well, it's, it's just not available here because of some, some legal BS, but it was available in Canada. So I don't know how we did it, but the store owner was able to work with a distributor and we, we got a pile of these things and I don't remember how many we got, but we sold, we sold some, we sold plenty of them. So I did get to experience it back in the day and I did get to, you know, be wowed by it, but also in the way kind of disappointed by it. Um, the CD drive in here, uh, you know, it's like one speed and it was really slow to spin up. There just wasn't a big gaming library for it. And ultimately it kind of became niche and it would take a while for people to think of stuff for this to kind of bring it to life again and I don't, I don't even know when some of these products came out but what I'm about to talk about is what's on the back here and that is the oh my gosh this is the terrible fire adapter dingus that gives you a ps2 style keyboard port all important rgb video but even more important inside there it gives you a 68030 accelerator and a compact, I'm sorry, a uh, SD card, hard drive, and memory. I, I don't know how much memory, I forget. Probably like eight megs, right? Because it's a, uh, well, actually, no, it's the 32. So this could do about up to 32 megs, really, couldn't it? You guys can you guys can tell me in the description. Anyway, it adds, it adds a CPU and memory in, a, in an SD card. So you can do, yes, you guessed it, as we've talked about many times on here, WHD load. You can play games off the uh, off the SD hard drive and not have to deal with the CD. Now the CDs are cool and they are fun and I do have one and uh, we will take a look at this. I'm not gonna deprive us of course or myself of the original experience of playing uh, a game off the CD32 and I love this. This is one of my favorite games. I've I've got um, a version of up up on my, my here, let me, uh, there's the original Gunship 2000, the floppy version which I love to death. Um, Got some new additions, by the way. I got 810 up there now. Uh, and uh, M1 Tank Platoon. Look at that. This is a really clean example, too. I feel really happy how, how clean this is. And it's been recapped and all that, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so uh, let's stop talking and let's turn it on and see what the heck happens, right? Hey, and, well, gosh, there we are. Booted right up. Took a little longer than I expected, but not too long. And... I went for maximum mood here. So this is now the CD32 booted as a, well, you know, it's it's an Amiga 1200, so here it is. And again, I apologize for any kind of screen blanking or weird refreshing you're seeing. That's just because I'm filming off of an old NTSC monitor, so there's gonna be some weirdness. But yeah, as you can see, this has a Amiga Workbench install. If we go up to the about, it's uh, a yeah, Kickstart 4060, Workbench 45.3, 1985 to 2002. <laughs> so first off, full disclaimer, I've never used a CD32 as a computer like this. So I have, I have no idea what's going on in this thing. Um, I mean, it's got Virus Z. Okay, Chris, Chris Edwards will love that. There's a shout out to Chris. It has, it has our good old standby directory opus. Yes, it does. And I don't even understand, I wouldn't even know. I love that he's got the copper gradient thing going on too, whoever put this install in here. There's a clear RAM here. I don't know what clear RAM is for. Again, if you guys could maybe leave messages in the comments area about this, I just don't know. Like, why is CX Handler out here? Is that important for this? And then there's a run. 
okay, that's just a, oh, that's like a, just a shortcut to a, like click WHD load. Oh, AG launch, iGame, games, demos. Um, let's run a demo. Okay, well, there's one demo on here and you guess what it is. It's state of the art. So what do I do, just double click this? Is this gonna work? Do we have volume? Are we going to hear things? Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but yeah, so the CD32 is PAL, and of course, um, I have a you know a 60 hertz power supply and, and a NTSC, you know, it's a 1084S. So again, I'm not up on the tech stuff. I don't know what that means. I mean, obviously I can look at the monitor and it definitely has a, a, a strobing to it that I normally don't see with a, a normal NTSC display. So it's definitely, the 1084 is, is able to display PAL signals, obviously. But this is uh, working great. Um, you know what I don't have hooked up right now is a keyboard. So unfortunately, um, we can't get out of this demo. It's a great demo. I'd love to watch it, but I don't want to make you guys have to sit through this whole demo again. You've, you've seen it a million times. But yeah, it plays beautifully. Look at that. And look at the speed. It's good. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got no way to get out of this. All right. Editorial break. So I reached over to turn the power switch off and I just bumped the RGB cable, which of course kind of wiggled the the terrible fire expansion card. I wonder if that was enough to cause some, some wackiness to happen right there. Wow, okay. I'm not sure about that. Um, what's on work? Oh, this is all the stuff, okay. So no editorial break. So yeah, this is one way you can do WHD load. You can go navigate through the file system and pick a game like you go into here and find something and you can see it's a jumbled mess. It's pretty horrible. And this is not the way to do it. Oh my gosh, there's like every, this is just A. Look at all the stuff in A, guys. There's this stuff that's still going. There's a lot of A. Yeah. Okay, so that, this is not the way to do it. Um, yeah, you usually want to run a program. So let's go to WHD load and launch, launch iGame. This is a much, generally a much cleaner way to do it. Probably should plug in the joystick. And this is an Amiga, but it's a console. I'm hoping the joystick ports are better buffered against silly man plugging it in while it's on. So let's, let's, I don't have a keyboard again. Let me, um, let me just find something quick here. Uh, quick, something, something, something quick that I, I know how to play. Uh, Agony, I know that one. Let's try that. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's definitely a PAL screen. You can see the, uh, it, it makes sense too. And this is this is ideal really, because again, all the games were in PAL. I mean, all the best games and a lot of the PAL games never came over to America. And so we never even saw them. Um, this one did, but you can actually hear the music at the right speed. It doesn't sound too fast. This is so cool. It looks great, but that's a nice high res interlay screen for Agony there. Really done well. If I remember this game too, it's got this cool intro great music and then they just drop you into the game and it's just like chaos music and there's like lightning and water flashing it's just nutty yeah okay so there's this cool yeah the game just starts and it's like everything is everything's trying to kill you go <laughs> look at those great water effects though the water effects look amazing we got this cool scrolling on there uh cool animation of the owl it's so cool. You know what? This CD32 gamepad is not bad. People said it was kind of junky, but this this is a this thing was working. I mean, it's working it. But room killing them spiders. Yeah, I just love the action. This the the intensity of it. It's like the the animated water, the music. That's like going, do it! I will go do it! I will kill the things! Kill them all! Grab the green potion, always the green potion. Kill this mushroom thing. And these these brown things. And you got the cool freaking copper background, right? And then the scrolling parallax stuff. This is just a fun game. Wow, this is... <laughs> and you saw how quickly I started it up. Just launched the iGame and 
You know what? I I mean, if you want like original, I say original, right? But there's a terrible fire in here. But hey, that terrible fire is using a real Motorola 68030. It's it's not an FPGA. It's a real Motorola 68030, and then it's got some, uh, you know, some memory you know, soldered onto the board. Oh, don't touch that. You die. Look at the little skeleton. Oh, that's a cool effect. Look at that, like, freaking 80s roller rink effect there. Wow. Um, don't pick up the poison potions, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to play, you know, Amiga games on original hardware in, in a way that's not overly accelerated, so they, they're just wacky, this is a lot of fun. I mean, you've got a 6830 that gives you just enough speed to... You know, make sure everything runs nice and fluid. You've got PAL, so you're hearing the games at the, you're hearing the music at the proper uh, you know, pitch and, and, and rate, and you're, the game's playing at the proper speed. It's not all wacky. Oh, man, I got zapped again. Why, God, you blow up into little tiny owl parts? That's disgusting. Oh, my gosh. Look at that old pirate ship back there. That's cool. Oh, wow. What happened to those guys? Man, they probably didn't feed the owl, and then the owl killed them, and then now he's out here all pissed off at the world. Um... So yeah, it's just, it's cool. I mean, I'm sure the CD32 and the 1200 is great on its own. Well, it is. I've shown you that before. But yeah, even just a 68020 with some fast memory does wonders for the speed of the 68020. But now you add in a 68030. Oh, man. And of course, the fast memory that goes with that. And then the hard drive loading. And then, of course, the WHD load to kind of bypass all of the, the BS of floppies. Oh, I know I'm rambling, guys, but I'm trying to play a game while talking to you. And this game is fun. I'm loving this. I love, you know, shooters are always so simple, you know, just point and go. But, I mean, oh, what the heck is this? This is like some frozen spire. Oh, I got to shoot the balls. Always with the balls. The marble madness. He's got the little pee balls coming at me. It's like these little frozen pee balls. Okay. Oh, oh I'm getting caught in a trap. Get up there, birdie. All right. Man, can I actually get past one level while I'm filming? Oh, game over. I can't do it while filming. Oh, I suck. Oh. Well, that was cool. So, yeah, that's one of the things you can do with it. You can turn it into a 1200 and an accelerated 1200. And you can still use the CD-ROM drive. It's got the drivers. You can pop disks in there and load up disks. And then, of course, the mouse and keyboard. I don't have the keyboard hooked up right now. Okay, so we're back, and for the first time ever on my channel, you can almost see the giant mass of man that is Q of Hold and Modify. As promised, we're going to use the CD32 as a CD32. Oh, look at that. Ooh, fancy. Oh. Oh, that was a little loud. <laughs> I don't know how loud it is on the mic, but that was loud for me. So this, I think this has some really gnarly opening, um, has a really gnarly opening cinematic that's different from the floppy. Yeah, here we go. Hey, it's Q here. I'm just going to jump in on myself because I don't want to show this entire opening intro because that's kind of a spoiler. And I really think you guys should, uh, you know, fire this game up yourself and uh, check it out. Plus, it is pretty long and the video quality is really terrible. And I don't want to spoil such a great intro with this crappy off screen recording. So let's go ahead and jump forward. Gunship 2000. It looks like this title screen is a uh, high res interlace screen as well. The video wasn't, but uh, that's pretty slick. And no, remember, this does not have a, an MPEG module, so that was just a straight up, uh, I don't know what format that would have been, CDXL maybe? CDXS. Oh, very exciting. Very exciting. And there, that's it. We're in the game. This is a very, uh, yeah, very familiar. 
pilot or pilot erase me we can pick uh this unit is not available press the green button to erase enter your name and then press the red button fl fl that's what we're going to be plus the uh yep that's my patch good to go i'm not going to play this whole game i'm not gonna, that because it's it's i'm I, playing this with a, a controller without the keyboard, a flight sim is is you can do it. These guys did; they tried. I'll give them that; they did try. But um, I'm not going to play the whole <laughs> game for you. I just want to show it working. This is you can see the actual real time speed of how long it takes to load a game on the CD32. As you can see, it's not not egregious. Uh, we're just going to go straight to outfitting. Get us up in the air as fast as possible. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get us up in the air because I don't know the controls. So there's a, uh, yeah, you know, we'll just stick to the, uh, we'll stick to the, the Cobra. Okay, begin mission. And here we go. Let's see how long this takes. Oh right, oh right. Click the safety switch to start your engines. You have to, um, this is the copy protection too. Um, oh boy. Yeah. So if I try to, oh wait, it's a CD. Why would it have copy protection? Is it going to work? So there, that little keypad you saw there, you were supposed to punch in a code and then on the floppy version. And that was like their copy protection scheme. But because this is the CD version, I guess, yeah, it said signal locked. I guess you rewind the uh, video there. You can see it already said uh, signal lock, which means you've entered the correct code and you can play. Yeah, there we go. God, this game looks so good. Oh, I'm blowing up my own base. Don't do that. So how do you take off? Oh, that's torque. Okay, I just blew up my own base. So first off, I'm, I know you can't hear it, but there's music in the background. That's really cool. The uh, the floppy-based version of this game does not have uh, game music. Now, you may not like that. It might take away from the, the, the simulation aspect, but... Oh, I took off. Oh, here I go. I cannot control my altitude. Um, oh, there we go. That's how you control altitude. All right, so I'm figuring this out. This is pretty, well, there you go. So this is something I'm supposed to kill. Yeah, he keeps saying target front. Now, that, those sound effects of the guys talking, I actually believe that is in the floppy version of the game, too. I think the only thing that's really different about this is we're getting the music. But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty slick game. Oh, I love it. I could actually just sit here and keep playing this. And, yeah, the PAL version of the screen's a little squished. I could use the controls on the monitor to uh, expand it. Okay, well, that was Gunship uh, being played just as a, a CD32. We're now back into the 1200. I popped the disc out and took it out. And if you don't boot with the disc in it, it it'll just, it'll take, a, it'll, it takes a little longer, but it just boots into the uh, the Amiga 1200. And there you go. So if you put a disc in it, it'll it'll boot like a console. And if you take the disc out, it'll just go into uh, a workbench. But if you do put a disc in it, it will boot it. So you're not trapped. You don't have to turn it off and turn it back on. You can always put a disc back in it. And by the way, when I was talking about memory earlier, I did find out it has 64 megabytes of fast RAM. So it's got plenty of fast RAM on here. So guys, that's it. That's my CD32 video. Uh, I know I didn't go into a deep dive, but you know me, I'm not really great on the tech stuff. I just like to give you a real world experience of what it's like using this stuff, especially for those of us that don't... Uh, know all the little details. I hope you enjoyed and uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to really enjoy this. I think this is a great option for a uh, an all-in-one portable, everything you need, WHD load, Amiga with a CD-ROM, Amiga gaming plus, you know, functional computer option. Yeah, this is neat. You should get one if you can.
or something like it. Bye.